Hi, I'm Jackie. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this aerial beach scene in watercolor. We'll start with a wet on wet technique to paint the sea. Then I'll show you how to use masking fluid to paint the palm trees along the shore. All the supplies are listed in the description. And if you haven't used masking fluid before, you can grab my free guide, Masking Magic, at the link in the description. It covers everything you need to know to get started with masking fluid. Okay, let's go to the beach. We're gonna start with wet on wet to paint the sea. I'm wetting my paper with clean water. I like to go over it two or three times until it has an even sheen, and then I wipe off the excess water from the tape. I've mixed up a watery mix of phthalo green and a little bit of phthalo blue, and I'm painting from the upper corner and defining the area for the sea. Don't go too far because the paint will spread a little farther than where you apply it on the wet paper. Now I'm mixing in a little more pigment to make the deep part of the sea darker. I'm not adding any extra water on my brush, and as I continue, I'm just adding phthalo blue so the deep part of the sea is more blue and it turns more green as we get to the shoreline. So I'm always working from that corner where I want it to be the darkest and blending it out into the wet paint on the sea area. Once I like it, I wipe off the excess paint around the tape. The pigment likes to travel along the edge of the tape, so I take extra care to wipe up any pigment that has gone along that edge. Now I'm mixing some indigo into my paint. I'm not adding any extra water, just pigment, and I'm dropping that indigo into the sea to create shadowy shapes under the water. It could be coral, it could be rocks, once that's done, it's time to let the paper fully dry. When the paper is completely dry, we can start painting the foliage. I have mixed up New Gamboge and Thalo Green to get these lovely tropical green colors. I'm using a scumbling technique to paint the plants. So I'm using my round brush on its side and I'm getting a broken stroke that skips over the texture of the cold press paper. It's painting the impression of plants and leaves for me. I'm gonna curve the shape of that foliage to match the shoreline. Now I'm going in with a darker mix of the same two colors, New Gamboge and Thalo Green, using that same scumbling technique so I get those broken edges. Now, I don't want so many white spots in that bottom corner, so I'm gonna use the leftover paint on my palette and fill in those white spaces. You'll see why I do that in a moment because we're gonna add some palm trees in that area. While the green paint is drying, I'm using a very watery mix of indigo and my smallest double zero brush to paint some ripple lines along the shore where the water meets the sand. In this painting, our sand is actually just the blank white paper. We're not going to paint anything for the sand. This is just a white sand beach so we can leave it blank. But I did want to add these ripples to define where the water is meeting the land. I'm painting long, narrow S shapes along the edge of the water.
Once the foliage is dry, it's time to use some masking fluid to bring out our palm trees. I poured some masking fluid into a small cap and I'm using my dip pen to apply it. With the dip pen, I can get a nice thin stroke that tapers to a nice point, which is perfect for painting palm leaves. If you don't have a dip pen, you can use an old small brush. Check out my masking magic guide in the description for tips on how to apply masking fluid with a brush. I'm painting the palm leaves radiating out from a center point because we're looking down at these palms from above. I'm drawing quick little strokes with my dip pen and I'm not overlapping any of the leaves right now. I'm using Windsor and Newton colorless masking fluid. You can see that it goes on white and then it quickly dries to clear so you can see the paint beneath it. You probably can't see very well where I've applied the masking fluid once it's dry, but you will see those palm leaves come back here in just a moment. Now, I'm trying to keep my paper in the same position here for the sake of the video, but if it's easier for you, you can feel free to rotate your paper to draw these palm leaves. So here I'm adding a second palm tree above the first one. And now I'm adding a third palm tree down on the bottom. So we'll have three palm trees total. Once the masking fluid is dry and you can't see it anymore, it's time to paint in more green. So our palm trees are going to reappear. I've mixed up a slightly darker mix of the green and I've brushed it over the palm trees. But as I bring it out towards the shoreline, I'm using that scumbling technique again. So I get that broken edge and keep that leafy look. I wanna make sure those palm trees stand out, so I'm gonna add an even darker green right at the center where all the palm fronds meet. Now it's time to let that dry. Once it's fully dry, we can add another layer of masking fluid. The palm leaves you add in this layer will appear below the first layer of leaves in the finished painting. You'll see that at the end when we remove the masking fluid. For this layer, I'm extending some of the palm fronds that were already there, and I'm adding in some new palm fronds. I want to fill out these palm trees and make them look more realistic. When you paint masking fluid on top of watercolor paint, it's like you're locking in the color that's already there, and then you can paint over it without having to worry about painting around it. It would have been very difficult to paint these palm fronds by painting around them. Masking fluid makes it easier. Don't be afraid to overlap your strokes with the masking fluid that's already on the paper. Again, it's gonna look like these leaves are underneath the first layer of leaves, so it's actually good if they overlap. It'll create more interest. Thank you. 
Now that it's dry, I'm mixing up a much darker mix of green. This is the same New Gamboge and Thalo Green mix, but I'm adding in more green. And to darken it even more, I'm adding some indigo. I want to make a really good shadowy color to add to our foliage. I start applying it over the palm trees and then again as I get closer to the sand I'm going to use that broken edge scumbling technique to keep that leafy looking texture. I'm holding my round brush on its side and I'm using the side of the bristles to get those broken strokes. If you haven't used a scumble stroke before, practice a few times on an extra piece of cold pressed paper before you start working on your painting. I want a nice deep shadow in the center of those palm trees to help make it look like they're popping up out of the shrubs beneath them. So I'm going to mix more indigo into my paint to get a really dark color in the center of each palm tree. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush and blot it dry so I have a damp brush that I can use to soften any of the edges where that indigo might create a hard line. Then I'm going to let everything dry really well. Once everything is dry, you can use an adhesive eraser like this or, my favorite, just use your finger to gently rub off the masking fluid. When you rub the masking fluid, it balls up and you can gently peel it off of the paper. Now, you can see as we remove the masking fluid, it looks like we have layers of palm fronds sticking up out of the shrubs below. You might notice your masking fluid removes some of the color underneath it, and that's normal. It lightens up a little bit, but I'm gonna show you in a moment how we can fix that. First, check with your finger to make sure all of the masking fluid is off of the paper. Then take a small amount of new gamboge and mix it with water. Gently glaze that right over those palm leaves. Try to avoid the indigo in the center because you don't want to reactivate that dark pigment. The yellow glaze does two things. It adds a little more golden color to the tops of the palm leaves, but it also softens the hard edges from the masking fluid and makes it look more natural. Once you're done glazing, let your entire painting dry fully. Now it's time for the big tape reveal. Before you peel the tape, let your painting dry completely so your painting stays flat. That's it, our aerial beach painting is complete. Look at how those palm trees pop out of the foliage. It would have been really hard to paint those without masking fluid. Before you go, be sure to download my free guide, Masking Magic, for more fun ways to use masking fluid. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have fun painting your own aerial beach scene.